Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is another video from Synchronous Generators. And here we'll be discussing example 4.5. And this is from Mr. Chapman's book of Electrical Machines. So before we uh, go to the question, uh, just to recall that uh, for every generator, we got to have a prime mover, something which can drive the generator shaft. And this could be a stream turbine, it could be air turbine or um, water turbine, whatever. So the turbine provides mechanical power and the generator converts that power into electrical. Then there is a control mechanism, which is called governor. The governor uh, is kind of a feedback arrangement. It senses the frequency and speed. Actually, it senses the speed, which in terms of frequency. And then it controls the speed by opening or closing this water supply valve. Now, why I'm saying that it is sensing speed and frequency? Because we know this relation. Uh, frequency is equal to Nn, that is the speed, number of poles divided by 120. So from here, we can see that the frequency is directly proportional to the speed. The electrical frequency is directly proportional to the shaft speed. So if we control the shaft speed, that means we're controlling the frequency. And here is another uh, explanation. When load increases, speed and frequency uh, falls down. The fallen speed can be restored by increasing throttle. So here it is the throttle and hence the steam flow and the power generated. And once we have done this, we have increased the new power generation now will match the increased load. And that is what we are going to see in the example that we'll solve. We use this type of a graph, which is known as the prime mover governor characteristics. This is also called slope. On one side is the power and the other side is frequency and also the speed. It is also called droop characteristics, and droop means inclined downwards. Okay, so we'll take this graph and we'll uh, follow this. In the book, the uh, relation given, the relation between frequency and power, frequency here, power here, is given by this equation, and this is similar to uh, y is equal to mx plus c or uh, y is equal to mx, the line equation. Here p is the power output of the generator. No load is the no load frequency. This is the no load frequency for which this graph is drawn. Then f system or f uh, full load or, or f operating is the, uh, the, the frequency lower than this. And then the slope of the curve, this curve slope is in kilowatt per hertz. Now this was bothering me because generally we know that the slope is dy by dx. So logically it should have been hertz uh, by kilowatt, but here it is opposite in kilowatts per hertz. So to satisfy myself, what I have done is that I have just tilted this graph tilted left by 90 degree and then flipped it around and then if you see uh, all the data is kilowatt and all those things now you can see that the slope is change in y which is power divided by change in x uh, which is frequency so this is how you can satisfy this is actually called uh, inversion of flow so if we, in, uh, if we change the x-axis to y-axis and y-axis to x-axis, then the slope is inward of what we get here. Anyway, it's not important. We just follow this equation. 
Now the question is figure 431 shows a generator supplying a load. So this is the generator supplying a load of 1 kilowatt. A second load is to be connected in parallel with the first one. So this is another load that uh, we need to connect. The generator has no load frequency of 61 hertz and a slope of SP1 megawatt per hertz. So this will give us our, uh, uh, we can draw the graph based on these two data. Load 1 consumes the real power of 1000 kilowatt or 1 megawatt at 0 0.8 power factor lagging. And load 2 consumes a real power of 800 kilowatts at 0 0.707 power factor lagging. Now we have to find these three questions before the switch is closed. That means before this is closed, what is the operating frequency of the system? After the load is connected, what is the operating frequency of the system? And after load 2 is connected, what action could the operator take to restore the system frequency? Now, uh, just recall that when we increase the load, what will happen? The generator uh, speed will slow down, the shaft speed will slow down, and so will the frequency come down. And we have to have some mechanism to restore that frequency. And as we had discussed that by opening the throttle of the turbine, we can increase the speed, the power, and the frequency. Okay, so we'll, we'll work with this uh, equation to solve this question. Now the first part, before the switch is closed, what is the operating frequency of the system? These parameters are given. So first of all, we draw this uh, like slope curve from 61 hertz is the no load. And then the power one, power is given one mega. So if we take these two points and we uh, uh, we draw a line at this point, we draw a line. So this will be the slope, which will be at one megahertz, uh, one megawatt per hertz. Now look. When we have one megawatt, then the drop here is one hertz. So we can say it is the slope is one megawatt per hertz. Okay, now to calculate the frequency for the when the first load is uh, connected, we'll use this formula from here actually. If you divide this by SP, so P over SP or I'm calling it P1 over SP, and then move F system outside, and then we have this relation. Now, all these parameters are given, so we'll just plug in the values, 61 hertz, P100, 1000 kilo, and slope is one megawatt per hertz. So solving, we get one hertz, and the final answer is, 60 hertz. So the operating frequency is 60 hertz, and you can see from here. So this is the 60 hertz point. And if we extend this to touch this line slope line, then it should, and it is meeting the one uh, megawatt or 100 kilowatt point. So this is the operating point in this case now. Okay, the next question is. After load 2 is connected, what is the operating frequency? So as we mentioned that when we connect the load, uh, this way the total load increases and so will the frequency drop. So we have to calculate that frequency again, same formula, except that here we are writing it system 2, and this will be the new load, total load, uh, adding these two. So these parameters, we have just added uh, P2. And plugging in the value now, P is now 1800. 
and the final answer is 59.2 hertz. So you, you saw that when the load is increased, the frequency or the operating frequency has dropped. And this drop is not acceptable. Uh, it should be very near to 60, about one or two percent variation is acceptable. So we have to do some, some things to adjust this frequency. Now let's see uh, how it looks in the graph. Okay, we were up to this point. Now the new frequency because of the added load has come down. It is now at 59.2. So it has dropped by 0.8%. Okay, the third question now asking, what action could an operator take to restore the system frequency to 60 hertz? Now in the modern uh, generators, there is an automatic uh, system of sensing and operating the governor, but this is, uh, we are talking of the manual system. So what will the operator do? Okay, after the load is connected, the system frequency fell down to 59.2. So this we had seen in the previous slide. To restore the system to its proper operating frequency of 60 hertz, the operator should increase the governor no load set point by 0.8. So if we increase this no load point by 0.8, it goes up, then this point will also move up. That means we have to adjust the new no load to 61.8 hertz by increasing the no load turbine speed and hence power. So this is what he has to do, that he has to increase the no, no load turbine speed. And so what will happen to the graph? The graph will now move up, same slope, but it has moved up to 61.8. And now if you see that our the load is uh, 1800 watt, and at 1800 uh, kilowatt, the, the slope is touching at a frequency of 60 hertz. So the frequency has now raised or increased to 60 hertz from the graph. So we can verify also from the equation. So this was the equation. Let's call this F system three, same formula, except that F no load is now 16.8. And so solving, we get the new frequency to be 60 hertz. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Uh, 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 sometimes a point uh, is mentioned, which is called the set point. So basically set point is the, this point. Initially, this was the set point. That means 60 hertz and uh, 1000 kilo. Now the set point is 60 hertz and 1800 kilo. Please let me know through your comments if you like this video and share it with your friends. Thank you.